Good morning, I'm David Briggs, and as many of you know, for the last year and a half or so, I've been the interim operator of the Briggs Opera House. And I've got to tell you, back to the community here, what a thrilling year and a half it's been to see the response of the community to the felt need for arts. In fact, it's more than just a felt need, it's substantial. One of the more substantial things that's happened for me in this time has been to merge with Jarvis Green and JAG Productions with the help of artistry from Pomfret uh, to add to our four-way approach, which is theater, dance, music, and film. Uh, we hosted their rehearsals last year, and this year we are hosting the entire production of Choir Boy. And I want to say a few things, and I want to introduce uh, the production team here of Jarvis and Christian and Mitch. Um, and let them speak for themselves about this production around the question of why did you choose this particular show? And before I turn them loose, uh, I just want to say this personally, having watched and enjoyed and grown from theater and the impact on it on me for some 30 years. I have no theater pedigree, uh, but by virtue of my involvement in hosting and facilitating theater, I've learned a lot. Very few shows has what this show has. It has it all. It has a wonderful set. It has a professional and talented cast. It has moments of levity. It has moments of poignancy. And it has a significant message that resonates on so many levels in so many ways. I would encourage you to not miss this show as it runs this week uh, for the last week, Thursday through Sunday, Choir Boy in the Briggs Opera House. So with that, I'd like to turn this over to you gentlemen. Thank you for doing what you do professionally in your whole life's work, and thank you, of course, for bringing this to uh, the Upper Valley community. Uh, I can't say enough good about it, and if I keep going on this, I may lose my audience. So why don't you take <laughs> over, and Jarvis, what drew you to choose this show? I think I know on some level, but I'd like to hear you articulate sure. that. Sure, sure, sure. And why don't you three guys talk about it? Yeah, so I'll, I'll give the audience a little bit of a context. Um, I, I, I was full-time at Artistry Community Arts Center in South Pomfret. I implemented a theater program there for about a year. Um, and then I went away uh, to do a world premiere of a new musical in Seattle at the Village Theater. Um, and before I left, I created this uh, theater company, Jag Productions, and... Um, Kathleen Dolan, who's the executive director there, uh, wanted to sort of continue the relationship and uh, sort of produce in sort of collaboration with Jack Productions. So I, sort of, I formed the organization while I was in Seattle, and while I was in Seattle, uh, started to think about like what would be the best show to sort of kick off um, Jack Productions. And with everything that's already going on in the area, like Pentangle Arts and Woodstock that are producing, you know, uh, beautiful full on musicals, Northern Stage that has like a full on season of classics and new works. And I'm like, so what could be sort of interesting for a new theater company in this area after being in the community for five and a half years? So I thought, how about, you know, as a black theater artist, how about I? create a theater company to produce, you know, theater that reflects our world and reflects me as a theater artist and that's sort of like black theater. Um, and that's sort of how uh, the idea came about to produce Choir Boy. Um, my dressing room mate told me about this playwright, Terrell Avin McCraney, who I have never heard of, um, and told me about this play, Choir Boy. I ordered the script. Um, got it and like read it in one, you know, day. You know, I, I couldn't put it down. Um, just the sort of like the relevance, the timeless um, sort of uh, it, coming of age story sort of told in a new way um, has never been told from a black voice. Um, and but also I thought it was interesting because like it, it there there's these universal messages and themes that you know, a primarily white community could take from this piece. Um, and so that's why, that's, that's why I chose to do the play. I, I also knew that like, I've been lucky enough to put in work with the, 
within the community already between Woodstock and White River Junction to sort of build an audience of doing pieces like Fiddle on the Roof, Laughter on the 23rd Floor, uh, Twelfth Night. Um, I knew that I could have an audience now that would be open to hearing new stories after being in the community for almost six years producing theater. Um, and what we've learned over the past two and a half weeks from people seeing the show is that um, the community are like are really op is really open to hearing new stories um, and the emails and the phone calls and the messages that we're getting f responding to this piece have been extraordinary and for me you know, I can sit and I can think about all the reasons why I c I'm doing this piece, but what I'm learning is that it's not really for me, um, that it's for our community and our community is like standing up and saying like, we want, we want this stuff. We want to hear these stories um, that are, that are told in a new way and, and are that sort of shows a bit of diversity that um, not necessarily, yes, no, it's showing diversity in a way that our community doesn't get. Um, and it's not that, you know, our community isn't, you know, um, open to, you know, theater arts and cultural events, um, but, you know, as living in Vermont in a white state, you don't get black theater at all. Let me pick up on that before I turn it over and inspire hopefully Christian and Mitch to speak. Um, last summer I was introduced to a notable piece of work called Between the World and Me. And it was a big eye opener. Mm. And for our listeners, I'm not going to get into it because we have a short time today, but run to the library or the bookstore yes. and get that book. Yes. Because uh, basically what it says, white America has some work to do and they got to get going on it. And this, uh, this play is a wonderful launch pad for any of us who want to pick up on and take that work seriously. So I don't mean to lead you too badly here, but is that perhaps part of your enthusiasm for this show, Christian? You want to? Um, I, 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 one of the things I was excited about this show is that um, it sort of showed um, young African American men in a, a light that we don't normally see them. I mean, Certainly we've moved away, or moving away, from seeing uh, stories where African-American young men are uh, the criminal, or the gangster, or the, the thug, or whatever you want to call it. And we're starting to see three-dimensional people from middle classes and stuff. But this play in particular, I really like because it de deals with universal themes that a white audience can relate to as well. But it's told through the eye of the black African-American community. These young men at this private prep school, coming of age, learning about themselves, learning about uh, how to interact with each other from sort of different perspectives and different uh, um, human needs. And uh, it just, it's about growing up. And it's nice to see that paint, people painted in that light. It's a pretty big common thread there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's anyone could relate to it. It's not white, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's human. Yeah, it's, it's human, human, exactly. And that yeah. there are actual institutions that are like dedicated to, you know, our development that yeah. people don't, I, d don't necessarily know about but should know that you know there are there are black boarding schools in this country. Yeah, yeah. the idea of, a, of an elite <laughs> black boys school yeah. was like, well, that shows how out of touch I am. Yeah. But, uh, and that's the message of the book. Yes. Uh, Mitch, chime in here. Give us some of your insights. Well, I was really excited when Jarvis gave me the invitation to kind of join this team even before we knew it was going to be Choir Boy that we were going to be working on. Because I knew that whatever the project was going to be, it was going to be storytelling in a way that I haven't done necessarily before. You know, I, you know, I have a fancy college degree, and we've done Shakespeare, and done Chekhov, and done the classics. And that's great. And it's always fun to reapproach those with a new light and in context of where we are today. But I'm more excited now about the stories that haven't been told. And you know, when we chose Choir Boy, it was like, great, there it is. There is such an awesome show for us to jumpstart this company, this new venture, this new partnership between 
us as JAG, between the community, between schools, uh, between church groups. How many school uh, students, high school students, have seen this production? Uh, by the time going, it's over, by the time it's over, we're going to have had about 450, 450 students. Yeah, think of that. Come. What a message! Yeah. Right. Oh, those have been the most exciting things to plan. Yeah. Uh, over the summer, I created our study guide to send out to schools and getting to think about, you know, if I'm teaching 11th grade English, what are the questions I want to bring up? Uh, hearing from schools that were saying, oh my God, could we even bring our middle schoolers? Because, you know, we're talking a lot about bullying. We're talking about cyberbullying. We're talking about homophobia yeah. in classrooms. That's, that's amazing and so and, inspiring. But you're not exclusively racial. No, 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 no because yeah. it's 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 an it's a it's an American sort of it's an American story and it's American culture. Yes, it takes place in you know black society, but this and is, through that lens through that but, lens. But this is this is an American right. uh, story. A couple of points, and then we're going to go on yeah. break here, and we're going to bring the cast back in and let them be be the rest of this discussion. Sure. Um, personal reflection. Um, I went to an all-male college in the 60s, so it's real easy to relate to the dynamics and everything that's going on there. Mm -hmm. It's nostalgic, but it's also a reminder of what a powerful experience that can be. Mm -hmm. uh, we might want to think the, over the virtues of that again. Um, it's a personal choice, but it was uh, an amazing time. Uh, this is the <laughs> valley that brought forth J.D. Salinger, at least for many, many years. And of course, the story of Holden Caulfield resonates with this. And mm -hmm. we grew up with that example of the rites of passage. Um, so the show, again, before we go on break, at the Briggs Opera House for the rest of this week, an important piece of, of work on so many levels. And um, I can't thank you folks enough for bringing it to our community. We hope that the Briggs Opera House as a black box theater, the perfect um, augmentation to the beautiful work that's done at Northern Stage will make this uh, an even stronger community because of it. And we, I mean, we absolutely love being at Briggs. I, I mean, think everybody does. No, we, it, yeah. it, it, it's, been a gift. it's a perfect yeah. venue for the show. Yeah. I mean, yeah. absolutely. And hats off to our neighbors at Northern Stage. They couldn't be better neighbors. So this is gonna work very, effectively, but we're going to need you to bring meaningful work like this. It's got to hit on all cylinders. That's the <laughs> plan. That's, in in That's fact, uh, before we leave, it's, um, you know, when you're, when you're creating a theater company and sort of have this the theoretical, like, what are we going to, what type of work do we want to present, you know? And you, when, when you have so many options, it's hard to sort of narrow things down. And so by doing Choir Boy, we've been able to like really narrow things down to like what we're doing based off of the responses. Like, do more of this. We want this. We need this for our community. So um, the stay tuned. Are, the classics are important, but this work is vital. Yes. And you can keep up with us at www.jagproductionsvt.com. Thank you. Very good. Well, we'll go on break. The cast will be here when we come back in the audience. You're in for a real treat. And don't miss Choir Boy. I tried to go bus fare up right there, man. You just wait. Just leave him alone. Yo, what, you sweet on you? And don't tell me I got to watch my cheeks around you, too. But, Bobby, don't start. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. <laughs> Ooh, come on, y'all rejoice and be glad. <laughs> All right, now take these, sit and arrange yourselves in order. Tenor, baritone, and bass. The first rehearsal of the Charles through prep chorus is about to begin. Bobby. Come on, man. How you doing, man? Blessed and highly favored. How you doing? Y'all all right? <laughs> Hello, we are the cast of Choir Boy, and my name is Will T. Travis. I'm playing Ferris Jonathan Young in Choir Boy, and I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, and I'm currently based in New York. Hello, my name is Wesley Barnes, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. I'm here in Vermont doing Choir Boy with these lovely guys, and I am playing Junior. Hi, my name is Claxton Rabb. I'm playing David Hurd in Jack Productions' version of Choir Boy. And I'm from East Orange, New Jersey, and currently live in New York. Hi, guys. I'm John Henry Carter, and I'm from Houston, Texas, and I'm playing Bobby Merrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we were going to go into, like, 
the show specifically and what it means for each of us mm -hmm. as artists. And for me, when I first found out about this show, I didn't quite know what it was. I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't heard of Terrell Alvin McCraney, who is the playwright. And after reading it, I immediately fell in love with this character, Ferris, as well as all the other guys, but specifically Ferris, because he's so honest and so bold mm -hmm. and unapologetic, and he knows exactly what he wants, and he's not afraid to ask for it. And it just teaches you that. It teaches me to be, like, be assertive in what I want and you know, not apologize, not be afraid to ask for what I want, mm -hmm. and you know, stand by that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, that's what he means for me. And it was interesting for me because I actually knew what the show was, just because of the fact that it was done in New York not too yeah, long ago, yeah, and mm -hmm. then I'm from LA, so like there was a production at the Geffen that yeah. came from New York, so it was just really, really interesting for me because I remember I was in high school, I think the first time I heard about the show, and I was like interested because it's not often that you hear of a show that's written for right. us, right. and that's something that made it stand out to me because of the fact that it's a show about African-American mm -hmm. teenagers mm -hmm. At a, at a pivotal point in their lives, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was just interesting for me to see that, and I was really excited because I wanted to be a part of something that identifies with me so clearly, mm -hmm. and something that represents the black community, something that represents the gay community, something yeah. that represents so many, so many universal themes, mm -hmm. I felt was something that was detrimental to my career as an artist, and just my growth as a person. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just like, yeah. This is gonna happen. I need to make it to this audition. Yes. So thankfully I did, but it's amazing. <laughs> Same for me. I saw uh, the Studio Theater production in DC mm -hmm. and their version of Choir Boy, and I wanted to do it so bad, but I was still in school. Mm -hmm. So once I saw that this audition was happening, I had to do it because it's rare when you see yourself reflected in a show. Mm -hmm. We don't get that opportunity. Right. So like the chance to change people's perspective and live your truth mm -hmm. on stage, mm -hmm. it, it's rare. Like you can't pass up that opportunity. Like right. when are, are you ever going to get a chance to like play something you know, right. like truly know for yourself. We've mm -hmm. all lived this story. Right. It's us four, we, we know the struggle of trying to accept yourself in a world that may not necessarily want to see you for who you are, especially right now in our current political climate, but you know, mm -hmm. it's just important to do work that you stand by and you can be proud of. Right. Yeah. So Definitely. this is why I had to do it. I think I heard about this play almost two years ago when it first came out, and um, in the premiere, one of the kids uh, went to my high school, so everyone was just so excited for him to kind of like be doing this premiere. And I didn't really know who Terrell Evan McCraney was at that point. I just knew that he'd written this bomb play, and I was <laughs> like, okay, it's a play about black, black boys, you know? And we, we don't have to pretend to be anything but ourselves in, yeah. in certain situations. And then I saw the breakdown, and I got the play, and I read it, and I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. Like, his language is so... It's so well developed, and all the characters are well developed, and like these are these are five kids going through something that it's hard for them to explain themselves, and for him to have such well such good writing, so that we can explain this to an audience who probably has never experienced what we've gone through. It's mm -hmm. it's very powerful. So I had to I had to be a part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And I guess we can go into like how we found out about this beautiful opportunity to work with JAG Productions. Mm -hmm. And I guess let's start with John. Like, how did you find out about <laughs> this audition? How did you find out about it? Like, what, what led you to this? Um, so yeah, I saw it on playbuild.com and uh, the casting director, uh, Paul Fouquet, he also cast me in, uh, in uh, Comedy of Errors at ASF, Alabama Shakespeare Festival. And so I emailed him immediately. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how this is gonna happen, but you need to get me in touch with this director, with this audition. So mm -hmm. he had me send in like a couple of videos, and then one thing led to another. I got a call, and it changed my life. Yes, yes. video submissions. Yes. 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 Truly. Yes. Same thing, so I was on Playbill and backstage, and I emailed Mitch, our associate producer, mm -hmm. and set up an audition time. I was in DC at the time, and I was just moving back home to Jersey, and I made the time, Thankfully, the times coincided, so when I was moving home, the audition was the same week, so it was mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. 
So I moved all my stuff from DC, and the next day auditioned, Ooh. did the call back on that Wednesday, and then a few weeks later got the email. That yes, this was happening, <laughs> and life was made. Life. Yeah, sure. And same for me, Playbill. Thank you, Playbill.com. Right. You and are that's a safe. godsend. Yes. Thank you so much. That's exactly what these two have said. Scrolling down. Playbill like we do every day. Every oh, day. Every morning, day. first thing you do when you wake up. Oh, hey, check out what's new? Playbill real quick. <laughs> I, <need a> job. <laughs> I'm like, I got some free time today. Yeah. Let's hit up an audition today. See if we can get some work. Right. <laughs> you know? Let's book. Right. Let's, let's book. 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 But yeah, just Playbill. Just a side, and I was like, yep, that's for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. How'd you find out about it? I found out, well, my agent actually asked me if I'd heard of it. And I, I was like, no, I haven't heard of this amazing show. I didn't know it was amazing at the time, but I hadn't heard of it. So he sends me all of the audition material and I, I read the script and it's, it's a very short play. And I read it and I was like, I have to be a part of this any way I can. And I went in for Ferris and David and when I went into the room, it, it, I just feel like it was God's plan because the, my reader had gone to college with me. And uh, yes, the dude that was my reader that. went to school with me, I and that already surprise, set like surprise. such a <laughs> such a. So that's how you got this. Kid. Yeah. Just get just stop it. <laughs> just stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> you got it because you're it gifted. All comes you're out. Talented. He's so talented. You're that talented. is why he got this. Excuse me. Don't play. Shut up. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> My reader Thaddeus Fitzpatrick, he was in the room shadow. and that that like made me feel so comfortable and mm. I felt this sen sense of love and I felt that behind the table. Like I could yeah. feel the energy and the love in the room and I was like, even if I don't book this, I want to work with these guys because they, mm. they seem so genuine, so sweet, so nice mm -hmm. and they are mm -hmm. and shout out to Jarvis and Mitch, <laughs> they're everything. Um. So that's how I found out about it, and I'm so blessed and happy that I that's was chosen true. to do this. Because it's rare. <laughs> like, they're always like, they're all rooting for you behind the table, yes. but most times you don't feel that, but yeah. this mm -hmm. time you did felt it. Like, when you the energy was different. See, like, you meet drivers for the first time, and Jarvis right. literally yes. is sitting behind the table like this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hi. So welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And going into like our process here, like for month mm -hmm. and the trend, like the process of like rehearsals and all of that, mm -hmm. for me, I guess it was, I would say it's been pretty smooth. Like mm -hmm. um, Vermont is beautiful. I've never been here before. Mm -hmm. And we got here like at the perfect time, yeah. like, mm -hmm. like mid October, the foliage was like, it's something beautiful. to be proud of. Yeah. Like I've never experienced it seasons yes. until getting here. Yes, that's like, true. This like, <laughs> like this is fall. Like this is fall. Like the leaves, fall. you know. It's like leaves are falling. <laughs> yeah. We have colorful trees. I'm like I'm from California, so we have palm trees. Yeah, true. Palm yeah. trees. True. That's about it. But here, like. Y'all have rivers, you know, rivers and, and, with water and trees. And water and I'm sorry, I love LA. But there's no water in the LA river. river. <laughs> <laughs> you turn on your sink, and there's the LA river. Oh. That's, that's as much water as you got. No, it's flammable. <laughs> hey, watch your mouth. I get to talk about LA. You. you. Don't. My mom's from California, so. Anyways, <laughs> back to the show. Back to the show. Back to the rehearsal we process. We digress. We digress. We had three weeks of rehearsal. Uh, three and a half. Yeah. Three and a half? Yeah. Three, and we yeah. all had the script and had everything we needed as far as that. And we had the lyrics to all of the songs, but we didn't quite have the arrangements. And Darius Smith is our MD, and he's phenomenal. And we came in and just hit the ground running with music. We, mm -hmm. um, we, we worked on music for like a week and a half until we like knew everything like by memory. We right. were all booked for yeah. all of the music. and. We pretty much just built upon that, yeah. and he dug in. He dug in to make sure <laughs> we had it locked. Yeah, it's interesting it because we've all done musicals before, but yeah. and this isn't a musical by any means. No. It's, a, it's a play with with, with, music. with a music element yeah. added yeah. to it. But the fact that the music is all a cappella yes. is something that just changes the di the dynamic yes. so 100%. much, so yeah. so much. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that because of the fact that one, I appreciate the fact that Terrell chose these spirituals specifically mm -hmm. for the, the plot of the play yeah. mm -hmm. and the fact that they're a cappella 
does so much for that too. Do you know what I mean? Right. Because mm -hmm. yep. like if he added music to it, I feel like that would just take away from it's something. It just diminishes so much yeah, the effect of yeah. that moment. Because right. like we are literally exposed vocally. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. so exposed and in such a vulnerable place. Mm -hmm. Vulnerable place. So. I just think that that's brilliant. Like I never really thought about that until this moment. So I'm just thinking out loud. Sorry for you. But like, no. yeah, that's brilliant. Good job, Terrell. Like, <laughs> good job. Good, good job, on you. Yes. Yeah. Good on you. But like going back to the process, it was interesting for me because of the fact that one, I've never have sung a cappella music unless I'm like in a choir setting, mm -hmm. and then just like getting familiar with like how my voice fits in that, and then also the way that your voices fit into it too, right. was something that was really interesting for me to work on as an artist. Mm -hmm. And intertwining the songs with the plot of the play was also something for me. Like, we've all been trained to figure out like what you're saying, why you're saying it, and how mm -hmm. that fits into the plot of the play. But literally, since these lyrics are something that's pulled from like a different, a different entity itself, it's just, it was a different process for me to actually like mm -hmm. go through these songs and figure out yeah. how to relate them to what's going on in that moment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because they weren't written for that moment. Right. right. And yet they fit so perfectly. They yeah, they do. fit so perfectly. It's yeah. helped me a lot with like scene into song. Mm -hmm. That seamless transition is oh so God. difficult because it's you don't want to seem like you're randomly breaking out into song. Right. Mm -hmm. But the that scene has to push you somewhere to make that song make mean some something. sense mm -hmm. and mean something. Mm -hmm. So it's helped a ton mm -hmm. in making the the need or want to sing that song and helping mm -hmm. that propel the scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's interesting that you brought up the fact of like we are musical theater people and we don't really do a lot of acapella singing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of where I had to dig into like my being challenged with this music is because I usually feel like the accompaniment is like the crutch. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what makes you feel good and everything. Like if you mess up, you know, the music the music is in the background just to right. cover that. We had no, no. safe guard or anything. It was yeah. just us alone in it, like yeah. David said, you know, and uh, <laughs> Shout out to Carrot. Yeah, there okay. you go. Okay. You know? no, yeah, but I, I really, I really think, I think Darius for kind of like pushing us past. I think that's why he made us memorize the music so quickly because he knew that we were going to have that challenge that we were going to have to make to bring it to life. With it being there's no compliment, mm -hmm. it's just us five. Yes. Right. Bringing it out off yeah. the page. You know, Should you know. we like sing something? I think we should. Sing Come on, Segway. Come what, on. Should we say? what should we sing? Uh, let's sing Couldn't Hear Nobody Pray. Okay. okay. Because we all could use a little prayer. Oh. Yes, we could. <laughs> Especially in this time. Yes. <laughs> okay. Anybody got an A? I think that's right. We're just chilling. We're just sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nobody pray. I couldn't hear nobody pray. Oh, way down yonder by myself, and I couldn't hear nobody pray. Couldn't hear nobody pray. Couldn't hear nobody pray. Couldn't hear nobody pray. Couldn't hear nobody pray in the valley. Couldn't hear nobody pray on my knees. Couldn't hear nobody pray with my burden. Couldn't hear nobody pray crying Savior. Way down yonder by myself, and I couldn't hear nobody pray. Couldn't hear nobody pray in the Jordan. Couldn't hear nobody pray. Hallelujah. I said. Couldn't hear nobody pray. Yes. 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 Joy yeah. ride, such a yes. roller coaster, and I'm so happy to be a part of this, and we would just yeah. love to share that with y'all. So Thursday through Sunday. Yes. Yeah. Come on. See you there. Over. <laughs>。What I'd like to remind you all in the audience、uh, today is that、uh, now forming is a group which will be called the Friends of the Briggs Opera House. So please stand by for more information on that and how you might join in in this exciting evolution.